what's going on with our sleep? It is. So you bring up a really good thing. So, you know, most people when I ask, and one of the big questions I ask them is, you know, how do you feel? Do you, you know, where's, where's your energy level on a scale of one to 10? And, you know, do you wake up refreshed? And a lot of people are not waking up refreshed. So um, I think what's, what's happened is we're living... I'm refreshed after I have my coffee. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm actually going to talk about coffee and how, how actually coffee works on uh, interrupting that, uh, that, that uh, thing that triggers sleep. Uh, which I'll, I'll get to. I'll get to later. But wait, wait. Are you going to take away my coffee time? Yeah. No, no. I will not. I love my coffee. I had, I had two cups this morning. I, it's, <laughs> it's it's the it's the legal drug that got me through medical school and my medical training. Um, but anyway, uh, I think what we have in the modern society is a disruption of our sleep wake cycle. Mm. So when you look, I always I always. But look it's at, prevalent. Like seventy percent of Americans have sleep issues, right? Ab- absolutely. Yeah. So so. Uh, we have uh, into our, our bodies our natural sleep-wake cycle, and that natural sleep-wake cycle is part of how we are as animals. So when you look at most animals, you know what happens at nighttime? The sun goes down. What do they do? They go to sleep. They're not on their iPads. They're not on their iPhones. They're not on their computer. They're not on their television. They don't have a light bulb. And they're not re- right in the refrigerator. All right. All so, of my cats running around at night looking for mice. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, if they're nocturnal, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that, uh, in my opinion, one of my experiences, uh, artificial light at nighttime, I think, is a big is the sort of the elephant in the room. Um, and uh, for people that uh, have uh, had sleep problems, one of the easy things that you can do that can help to fix that is to have a uh, blue blocking lights uh, glasses yeah. at night. Yeah, uh, I actually have them. I, I do too, absolutely. So when you look at the... Uh, you look goofy, but you sleep good. Right, exactly, yeah. And it's, it's actually in the medical literature, and these LED lights have a very high blue spectrum. And blue light is the is type of thing that sort of wakes your body up, and it suppresses melatonin. So melatonin, which we can measure, we can measure that easily uh, in patients, is the hormone of darkness. So one of the times when I'm seeing patients, not only do I measure their sex hormones, their adrenal hormones, but I also me- measure their sleep hormone, which is their melatonin. Like at level. night, maybe. Uh, yeah, and, 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 at, at, at night. So you actually you'll, you can check it in the morning, and you can also check metabolites of melatonin. And your melatonin levels tell you whether or not you're getting enough darkness. So you can take melatonin. Um, and as you get older, our bodies produce less melatonin. But the thing that you can do to boost your own melatonin is not expose yourself to light at night. Hmm. And whether so that's candles, it. back to candles? Back to candles, yeah, exactly. Candles blue blocker actually, glasses? Yeah, yeah. Can, candles actually work quite well. Yeah, yeah. They, they do. But uh, the, the LEDs on screens and uh, all the, you know, all lights now, they're no more incandescent lights. So what, what about the, you know, the sort of night sort of setting on the... Computer, iPad, does that just go it, bar- garbage? It, it doesn't cut the mustard. Yeah. Uh, it's not as but good. But what if you wear the glasses yeah, with, you, with, when you use the screens? Yeah, if you, and, and you'll know they work uh, because when you wear the, the real ones that really cut out 99.9% mm. of the blue light, you, you can see I did the other night. I was tired, but I put my glasses on and my blue black glasses I got from True Dark. And you can go to truedark.com and you you put the glasses on and I watched my movie on my computer in bed and... I was like, normally I kind of mess with my sleep a little bit, but it was like, fine. I like, had a great deep sleep. I'm yeah. like, wow, this is really amazing. Yeah. I mean, the, whatever you're going to do with computer, whatever, it's not going to look normal, but you will sleep a lot better. And I, yeah. I, I do that myself. And I actually, this is where it, it where it, it really hit me about the, the uh, effect of light. Is I was in New York City uh, uh, one uh, weekend and I was giving a lecture and it was, you know, it was a Friday night and I was, I was lecturing the next day and uh, I'm walking down, you know, just... What do you do in New York? You walk down Broadway. So I'm walking down Broadway. It was about 10 o'clock at night. I did it for about a couple hours. It was like 11, 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the lights, on, the lights on Broadway, it's like, I could not sleep that night. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's where it really hit me. I was like, oh, my God. This is, I mean, this was obviously real, real bright LED lights. But it was phenomenal. I just could not fall asleep. Wow. Could not stay asleep. That's incredible. And that sort of got me down that path of really understanding. Light. So light is a big problem. Light pollution. Light pollution. Yeah. Exactly. Light pollution. I mean, there was a book I read years ago called Lights Out. Yeah. Which describes the advent of chronic disease and obesity with a light bulb. Yes. And how that affects our sleep-wake cycles, how it affects our circadian rhythms, how it right. affects our hormones, yep. how it affects our metabolism, mm-hmm. which is something we normally don't, don't think about. Exactly. It's Especially exactly. in traditional medicine. We never learned about light. Exactly. But now, you know, there, there's... You know, and, I mean, And one of the best things that you can do 
uh, and I try to do this as, as often as I can, is early in the morning exposing yourself to light. So darkness tells you to go to sleep. Light tells your body to wake up. Mm. And exposing your eyes uh, without, uh, actually even without glasses, to the sun. I'm really a sun worshiper now. I mean, it's sort of, you know, st- you know sun gazing. Uh, it is very, very powerful for You're setting. blind, but you sleep fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're blind, but you sleep fine, exactly. Uh, uh, but exposure to light shortly after you get up is one of the things that helps to synchronize it's and true. set your circadian rhythm. Yeah, every morning, my wife and I, we, we get up and we take the cats for a walk around the yard. Yes, our cats go for a walk. They're well-trained Burmese cats. And we literally walk around and get the sunlight and yeah. we spend 20 minutes out there. Uh, just walking around the yard, and it's just so nice to get that sunlight in the morning. Exactly, yeah, and and that and you want to do it relatively early within I think twenty thirty minutes of getting up and exposing it to the sunlight is very very helpful for synchronizing your body clocks. So so that's one reason that people are having so many sleep issues, uh, and, and what what are other reasons people have sleep issues other than the light pollution? Uh, sometimes it can be medications, uh, medication side effects. Um, some of the uh, pa- people are taking uh, these stimulants. So, so mm. I'm tired. So here your doctor gives you Ritalin or Adderall, and then that is a stimulant, and it's sort of keeping you up. Mm. Um, excess amounts, uh, overuse of caffeine, uh, or having caffeine too late in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some people are very caffeine sensitive, and you know they can't have any kind of tea or coffee. Yeah. Most people in general, I'm going to say that you know if you have one or two cups of green tea coffee and it's early in the day it's not going to affect your sleep the, the half life of coffee is about six hours so mm. in six hours half of it's out and then so another six hours a quarter of it uh, definitely is nothing afternoon right? exactly exactly nothing yeah. afternoon exactly and most people it's not going to affect them and alcohol is a big sleep oh disorder. alcohol is a big one in fact i had a, i was about to tell you about a case so i had a patient who was uh you know eating late at night and that's another one. That's another my, one, right? Another one. And, and that actually, I think, also uh, affects sleep uh, also. Because when you're sleeping, you don't want to be digesting. Uh, you really want to be in a fasting state. One, is going to interrupt your sleep. And two, it's going to make you fat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it yeah, this, the, right, this, that's you're basically how, storing it instead of metabolizing it. That's how sumos, right? The sumo, the sumo diet. That's how sumos uh, get fat. They eat and go to sleep. That's right. That, that, was, actually a, uh, that was actually a chapter in my book. My, one of my first books, Ultra Metabolism, was called The Sumo Wrestler Diet. <laughs> Right, because they, the, the, the sumos uh, have a recipe for knowing how to put weight on, right? Mm-hmm. You eat and go to sleep. So, uh, and it was, a, it was a simple patient came into me and they were eating late at night. It was like eight, anywhere between eight to 10 o'clock at night. And they were having a couple of glasses of, of wine, you know, which, you know, that sounds okay. Well, it was a combination of eating late at night and those two glasses of wine uh, or alcoholic drinks. And very commonly, especially as you get older, maybe after 45, 50, you'll get what's called rebound insomnia. So uh, the alcohol sort of relaxes you, whatever, but when it wears off, the, the brain sort of up. wakes up. And I, ex- I started to experience this myself when I started uh, turning uh, 45, 50. And so I'm very aware of it. So any patient- So you drink wine in the morning. You drink wine in the morning, exactly. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happy hours at, at noon. So no coffee or wine after lunch. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so, so, uh, one of the things that you do with patients is, you know, get, get them aware of their circadian rhythm their their sleep wake cycle, the importance of light in the morning, darkness at night, and then, uh, also get them off for maybe two months of get them off of all alcohol and all, um, uh, caffeine and sort of see where their, see where their baseline is, see where their baseline is. And then it's for them to decide how much and how often and when to have those, those things, which, you know, a, a good cup of coffee is pleasurable. A glass of wine is pleasurable, but too much, too late is not a good thing. Yeah, and there, and there are other things that can that are sort of off the chart a little that people don't think about. But uh, I had severe mercury poisoning, and that really interrupted my sleep. So insomnia can be related to heavy metals and toxins, for example. It can be related to thyroid problems. People have low grade to low thyroid function. That can be a sleep disruptor. Mm-hmm. Hormonal issues, yep. obviously, menopause is another one. Yeah, men- oh, menopause, but, huge. But even, even like blood sugar issues, people who are diabetic or pre-diabetic, they can get hypoglycemia in the middle of the night that wakes them up, they get night sweats and hot flashes. So there's a lot of reasons people have sleep issues that are, are you know, biological that you could fix. Yeah. Um, and even nutritional factors, low magnesium and and other factors can be really a big, big issue. Exactly, yeah. And, and it's interesting you say it because there are some people who will have um, a very big cortisol response at nighttime. So cortisol is the adrenal hormone, sort of your get-up-and-go hormone. We're supposed to have cortisol rising as we wake up. 
And there's called a, call a, a test that we do called the cortisol awakening response. So how much does your cortisol rise uh, as, you, as you get up? Well, there are some people that uh, will have problems with cortisol secretion at nighttime when it should be really, really low. Um, and uh, that's another thing that I think is, is, is the uh, important thing that interrupts people's sleep is excess amount of cortisol stress hormone at nighttime. Yeah, that's what my wife yells at me for reading um, a COVID-19 news at night before bed. <laughs> She's like, you're not going to sleep good. I'm like, yeah, you're right. So, but you're right. You, want, you don't want to be watching scary things and stimulating things and get your adrenaline up before you go to bed. Yeah. And I think, I think you know, often we, we live a sleep-disruptive lifestyle. Yeah. Right. So we eat late, we drink, we have lots of lights, we act, engage in stimulating activities before bad. 24 7 news. To email news. before yeah. bad. Uh, we, we don't do things to wind down. Just having a simple sleep hygiene routine. You know, I, I, I'm really religious about this, but you, you know, at least an hour, maybe even two hours before, you turn everything off. You maybe, I take a hot bath with Epsom yeah. salt. I put lavender drops in there because lavender actually reduces cortisol levels. The so lavender essential oils. I've made my room completely black. I have a blackout shade. Mm -hmm. Even have eye shades, earplugs if you need them. If you live in a noisy area, yeah. Uh, I use those when I travel. All blue the time. blocker glasses. So there's a lot of a lot of ways to structure your environment so that it's really. But make sure the temperature is right. Yeah, you, you, know? you just there's another another clinical case. I had this older gentleman. Uh, who um, uh, he was had a whole bunch of different kinds of problems and had a, probably a little bit of um, uh, early Parkinson's, mild sort of slowing down. He's in his, in his late seventies, and he on his own, um, you know, was was found out that when he turned the thermostat down from seventy degrees to sixty four degrees, he slept so much better. Yeah. And again, that's the other thing is you know, <laughs> what what happens to animals at nighttime? They're actually out in in nature. And guess what? We're yeah, animals too. That's true. We're actually designed to be out in nature. Yeah. And and that that lowering of the temperature also, I think, is very very good for inducing sleep. And I actually think uh, this is my own sort of theory is that when you take the warm bath, and then you go to bed in a colder environment, that shift of the temperature yeah, differential, that helps. It, I, I just get very relaxed when that's I do. True. That. I mean, the best sleep I had in years was I was uh, doing backcountry skiing with my daughter last year in Utah in the middle of winter, and you're climbing up, so exercising, get up for the hot but like you're sleeping in an unheated hut in a sleeping bag and it's like 30 degrees or <laughs> like it's freezing yeah. but you know you got your hat on you're getting like i just love like a baby and 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 i my wife and i have I mean, this is a common debate you know she actually had a comedy skit about this which is <laughs> how she has I've to go to bed, <laughs> how to go to bed in a winter coat with a hat on and i'm like and so we figured out this solution which is this really cool thing called the chili pad and it's a it's something you can buy which you Put, it's filled with water. It's like a water that goes through it and it cools it. It's sort of like an air conditioned water. And, and I can have like 64 on my bed and she can be like 75 on the other side. And like, it's the best. And I, and I use that and it, I sleep great. Because in New York, when I had an apartment, the, the, the radiator was on. I couldn't control the temperature yeah, right, in the winter. It. You open the window, it's too cold. In, it's yeah, exactly. So I had this thing and it was like the best invention ever. Yeah. And they have ones with different sizes. You can like switch it for the guys, yeah. girls. So it's it's really uh, uh, important to get the temperature right. So there's all these really simple hacks. And there's in the show notes with this podcast, there's going to be uh, articles that have a lot of these things in them. So I think it's yeah. really important for people to to kind of think about how do they optimize their sleep because why is sleep so important and what are the consequences of chronic sleep deprivation? Chronic uh, sleep deprivation is oh, obviously that one of the things is that if you have sleep deprivation, you get angry and irritable. Mm. You're very irritable. It, 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 it actually affects the amygdala, the part of the brain, the primitive part of the brain that's a sort of fighting uh, kind of a thing. So when you see people who are chronic... Was America sleep deprived? Is that the issue here? Yeah, uh, yeah. My, <laughs> is that we're so hostile yeah, and uh, we, we might even have the, the POTUS might be sleep deprived. Uh, well, we know he is. Yeah, yeah. He could very well be. And uh, so when you don't get good restorative sleep... and you know, they say that, you know, seven to eight hours is ideal. There are some people who need more or a little bit people who need less. But most of the time you want to ask, I ask my patients, when you wake up, do you feel like your batteries are charged or do you feel refreshed? That's really, I think, the key thing. Um, and also uh, looking at patients, how quickly can they fall asleep? It's not how much time you're in bed. It's like, can you fall asleep relatively uh, easily? I had a patient the other day who was like, it takes, it takes me two hours to fall asleep. Oh you know, my God! Why is that? Okay, then you got to go down the laundry list. What are you What are you doing at night that may be uh, imp impairing that? 
Um, and then uh, you just you just need to uh, have that good good sleep hygiene. It's, it's, it's key. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. Headaches are, are mostly migraines is the top reason that people see neurologists. It's, it's the most frequent pain related complaint among workers. Migraine is no different from any other disease. It's simply the name we call a set of symptoms that are common in a group of people.